Well, bring out the tents and the shades because Floyd Fest is here, deemed as the magical mountain. Thousands of people are now enjoying the festival in its original home. More than two decades of memories are here at Floyd Fest, and next year it's going to be moving to a new home. So people are capturing the moment right now. This festival is different than any other festival in the nation. All of us who work in the staff, most of us, have worked many, many other events across the country. And I'm still to this day amazed at what we have here. Amazed. It's so different. And there's some heart in this festival that's not unlike any other thing you go. And this is, okay, this is the Patriots Festival. That's the one thing. Yeah, Floyd Fest is great. I mean, that is the one thing, Floyd Fest has been the one thing that, if you go anywhere, you can be like, you know, like Floyd Fest, and, and they'll know like the music festival. And because it's brought so many people to this town, you know, it's helped so many people. And I mean, I, you know, I met Sadler, my producer here, you know, that's kind of how I made that connection. And so I think that, you know, Floyd Fest does a really good job of showing a lot of local love too for a lot of local bands by doing the on the rise and providing those opportunities. So I think from the musicians to the vendors to everything, you know what I mean? It's, it's, good for, it's good for the town. And this year's festival will have nine or 10 stages with around 100 bands playing during that five day event. Now the bad news is the tickets are already sold out. This festival scene in the world, we've always had gatherings, we've always had festivals, but we're kind of in this new world coming out of the pandemic. The joke was this weekend, we might be in Festival 2.0. It may have changed a bit, you know? We, we need this more than ever. I've been coming here ever since I was eight years old. I remember coming with my mom and seeing Blues Traveler on the main stage and growing up in the children's universe. And then after that, I went to the Imagine Tent, I believe it was, over the Global Village. And for that was like for the teenagers. And then growing up, going as an adult, camping on my own, uh, playing here and now like the full transformation to, to be coming to this festival and playing on the main stage with a band that I came and saw when I was young and uh, it's a full transformation for me it's really special and I see that cyclical kind of stuff in other aspects of the festival this, this uh, area Floyd Fest and everyone involved I think it's it's a great nurturing community and it's a family Uh, so this is my first year here, but this is the general store. Um, so we sell camping supplies and food and then dated merch from the last couple years. What are the most popular items? Oh gosh. Uh, show me a little bit, show me a little bit. <laughs> most popular are cigarettes and ice. Okay. So <laughs> lots sense. of fun stuff. That makes sense. What is the most unique thing that you guys sell? We have those hats. So they are UFO ponchos that go over your shoulders and they're great for social distancing during COVID. Uh,
How many times, how many years have you been coming to Floyd Fest? Um, this is my seventh year. Your seventh year coming to yes. Floyd Fest. And why do you keep coming back to Floyd Fest? It has a good, um, good vibe. The, the, the people here are, are phenomenal. The food is phenomenal. The artists, there's uh, an eclectic variety of um, different musicians that you can see and it's, it's pure musicianship and yeah. just the, the atmosphere, the mountains, the music, the people. Have you made friends here and like a community or something? I have. I have up here in Woodsy. There's a couple back back here. They're from Roanoke. We are not from Roanoke, so we drive fairly far to get here. So we've befriended a group behind us here. They've been coming here since the first Floyd Fest. And then recently, over the last couple years, this um, couple next to us too. So our kids see their kids and you know they kind of grow up together as well. Morgan lived with us for several years of her childhood and she wrote songs and played a guitar from the time she was knee high. I probably still have songs that she wrote in cookbooks and such that I find, you know, at random. I have guitar picks still in the oddest places at her home. So it's just, it, um, no no surprise. Um, we were kind of afraid that she wouldn't follow through with it, but we knew she had the talent. What you see is what you get with Morgan. She, um, she's, just everything you see is Morgan, but you don't see what a big heart she has. Um, one day we stopped at a fast food restaurant and she just jumps out of the car and runs across the road from where we were at because she saw a homeless woman and she's like 12 years old and she pulls money out of her out of her pocket to give that lady
to see you, Morgan. Yeah, you too, man. And first of all, Floyd, Virginia. Yeah. Welcome home. Yeah, yeah. I grew up like three like? miles from here, so it's. What was that like? It was great, and you know, coming back, um, I drove in this morning, uh, separate from the guys, and it was really, it it, it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, I did get a little emotional today because you know I got to see my my parents and stuff, and it's it's been, I haven't been actually home since I guess. I was in for about six hours in April, and then other than that, I haven't been back in almost, I guess a year, I wasn't back for the holidays. So it's, it's been a long time, so Absolutely. it's been really nice. What does Floyd Fest mean for Floyd? Yeah, yeah, Floyd Fest is great. I mean, that is the one thing, Floyd Fest has been the one thing that, if you go anywhere, you can be like, you know, like Floyd Fest, and, and they'll know like the music festival, yeah. and because it's brought so many people to this town you know it's helped so many people and I mean I you know I met Sadler my producer here you know that's kind of how I made that connection and so I think that you know Floyd Fest does a really good job of showing a lot of local love too for a lot of local bands by doing the on the rise and providing those opportunities so I think from the musicians to the vendors to everything you know I mean it's it's good for it's good for the town you know? Talk to me about that moment with, with Sadler. Um, you know, I think Jason Houston was playing that day and, and you gave them the demo. What are the details? What are the yeah, details? I just remember Jason being the main one. It's funny that, you know, um, he was, they were the main ones I wanted to see that day. Like that was the only band I wanted to stay for and we were playing in the VIP tent. And a guy came up to me and was like, hey, do you have like a demo or something? He was like, you know, I'm, the, I'm Jason's guitar tech. Yeah. And Kane, uh, is his name and, and he's a great guy I love Kane and uh, I didn't expect to hear anything you know and then a couple days later I got a message from Sadler and him and I have you know we we've been inseparable ever since he's he's um he's more than my producer honestly he's like my best friend I mean we we talk yeah. all the time you know I play with play with his his kid and you know I sit and talk with his wife you know like we're, we're I feel like he's he's family and uh, you know I got that from here. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Well, let me leave you with this, Morgan. I've noticed, you know, on social media and everything that you've become and talking to like girls from all ages on the crowd. And since I met you, it's been a beautiful thing to see develop. Yeah. That you've become, obviously you're not perfect, none of us is perfect, but you've become like, like a beacon of, you know, be strong with your beliefs, with your goals, you know, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, just a beautiful thing that you're becoming. Um, um, thank you. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? It's a really beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel, you know, I'm definitely evolving. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I think especially since the pandemic and the reckless and coming out and, and doing all this as I'm kind of getting older and, and you know, I, I have a platform now too. And so, but I think that as long as I have the platform and I'm honest about where I'm at in my life, that's, you know, go going to translate well. And yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of little kids out there. And you know, I, I was that young girl that had no confidence and didn't, and you know, and so it doesn't matter, young girl, young boy, I don't care if you're in your 40s, you know, I think that there's always, we, we need to have that confidence yeah. and that, you know, that you can do anything you want to do. I mean, I never, the things I'm doing right now, I never thought I would do, be able to do, you know. So it's it's amazing, and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to remember to be authentic and um, as as nerdy as I can be sometimes, and as imperfect, I'm just trying to be. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, thank you. Michael Weintraub one of the most renowned photographers in the music industry. Why are you in Floyd Fest, Michael? I'm here and I created a mer an immersive art and music experience in the VIP uh, and the catering tents. And we're here promoting my new book, Instrument Head Reveal. But we have over 24 foot tall photographs um, in the VIP that we turned into a museum. And I'm here promoting my new book, Instrument Head Revealed, where we unmask the musicians. What are the most common questions you get? You know, when people first see your work? They ask when the first time I did it, how I got the idea, yeah. if I always had the plan to do the second book. Right. And uh, yeah, I'm telling the same stories over and over again. But the cool part about it is, when I originally started going back through this work during the pandemic, we weren't able to share space with people. 
So now it's a really cool thing because I went through the photo shoots and remembered what it was like and it was healing for me. So we decided to put this book out that's benefiting the New Orleans Musicians Clinic um, as a tribute for us, you know, live music coming back. Michael, you've been around the world with your work and everything. What makes Floyd Fest so special? There's a real family environment here. Nobody's aggro. Everybody's really chill. Everyone's together. The musicians and the fans are together. I feel like this, for a smaller festival, I think that this is kind of the best. You know, go Floyd Fest. The legend warming up.
here since I was eight years old. I remember coming with my mom and seeing Blues Traveler on the main stage and growing up in the children's universe. And then after that, I went to the Imagine Tent, I believe it was, over the Global Village. And for that was like for the teenagers. And then growing up, going as an adult, camping on my own, uh, playing here, and now like the full transformation to, to be coming to this festival and playing on the main stage with a band that I came and saw when I was young. And uh, it's a full transformation for me. It's really special, and I see that cyclical kind of stuff in other aspects of the festival. This this uh, area, Floyd Fest, and everyone involved. I think it's it's a great nurturing community, and it's a family. Absolutely, Catch. Let me ask you about something that I've noticed that you've taken with your band, a new direction. Uh, I feel like you know the, when the hurricanes were in Nashville, you took you took you took a stand. Now it's like you're using your voice to bring light to communities, Ukraine. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Do you mind talking to us a little bit about the role that you have now, you know, using your voice to give light? Sure. Well, one of the things that always uh, made me want to get into the music business was uh, to have a, a place on the stage where I could say what was on my heart and, uh, and build community, you know. I mean, it's kind of a pulpit up there. And uh, having a fiddle having the banjo singing harmony with you yeah. is a way to raise up a big community spirit. Um, you know, music is, is communication and it's also, it's a passionate kind of um, prayer we're all saying together and God, it makes you feel so good. So why not uh, help those of us who are less fortunate, you know, whatever the circumstance is. Right now we're, um, I mean, and you don't have to look far to find worthy people to give your time and heart and energy and money to uh, and so having a um, having a chance here at Floyd to raise uh, awareness and um, maybe even more importantly money for the Patrick County Food Bank is just so great uh, we want we want Floyd to fill the Patrick County F Food Bank again and again six seven times over there's so much love and energy here, and there's so much need in Patrick County for healthy meals for kids, uh, for, for seniors, and so here's an opportunity for us all to pitch in. Love it. Let me leave you with this, guys, because so you got a busy day ahead. I've heard Mason's, how, she, how he came to be, to this pretty great family of yours. When was your aha moment catch where you said, Mason, I, I want him on my musical family for good? <laughs> well, Mason, I gotta say, I feel really indebted to Floyd Fest. Oh, really? Okay. I feel like if it wasn't for Floyd Fest, then then I, I might not have had you in Old Crow. Wow, what a statement! I tell oh you why. Gosh. You know, you you coming up here and this being your home festival. Yes. Um, you know, we both went to Mount Airy, uh, just over the state line in North Carolina. We've done so many of the same things with about 20 years in between the doing of them. But the fact that we've both been here at Floyd together yeah. at the same time, and I might have been, you know, 25, and you might have been a little kid, <laughs> uh, or I might have been 35, and you might have been like a, like a little teen, like a hellion or whatever. So I'm curious, what is it like to... Um, to be in a band that you used to see on the stage at Floyd Fest. Well, it was pretty wild for me last year um, because I was the on the rise runner up with my band, and it was I was it was a huge thrill for me to be able to go uh, to Floyd Fest, thinking I'm going to get to play on the main stage this year with my band. But then to come back and play with the headliner, you know, at the the perfect spot um, was on the main stage late night in the spotlight it was a dream come true definitely and then to come back and do it all over again with this new album that we're on paint this town Winchester is coming to this Floyd Fest as the defending, like as the champions of the On The Rise. You guys are performing every day. Right, right. Different feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. It's great to be back, represent uh, Southwest Virginia, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. 
It'll be a great weekend. Absolutely. It, it, isn't it amazing, like, what a difference a year makes? I mean, everybody knew you guys were headed this way, but, like, now you're here. Yeah, and Boy Fest last year was a big kickoff yeah. to a lot of that and the new album and all that, so. Tonight at 10, a major add to the Floyd Fest lineup as Hart headliner Ann Wilson joins the schedule. The singer-songwriter is famous for a bunch of hits, including Barracuda, What About Love, and Crazy On You. She's expected to perform some of those classics along with songs from her newest album, Fierce Bliss. Ann, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And so, like, Fierce Bliss, your new album, it sounds as good, honestly, as some of the stuff that you've ever done. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I mean, stuff like Greed. Missionary man, it's just like you're at the top of your game, man. Oh, thank um, you. Am I right or am I wrong that it seems like you are reinvigorated and you have like a new energy level that like it's like like a like a newfound sense of, of passion with this music? Yeah, yeah. 
definitely. I think that um, the band that I'm with right now, the songs I've been writing, really work, and uh, it's been very, really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of the of the band, the Amazing Dogs. Yeah. I mean. You've met so many musicians throughout your career. I live in Nashville and people see the musicians, good musicians all the time. How do you know, Anne, when, when a musician, when, when, when a band, you can actually collaborate, when they are good enough that you can say, you know what, I want to I wanna like live with them and work with them and really yeah. go deep with them? Well, of course, it goes without saying that the musicianship has to be on a really high level. Right. But the real thing that makes collaboration so fun is the hang, you know, like if you can hang out together and if your sense of humor kind of gels and, yeah. you know, you you go through experiences together on the road and it turns you into a little extended family. Absolutely. I mean, you build up a chemistry that that's really positive and Absolutely. it works. Absolutely. And during the pandemic, you know, you drove up to Seattle again where you grew up and you came back to California, down to Florida. Did, those, did that year and a half or two years with no shows kind of like make you rediscover the thrill of playing to 15,000 people like you will tonight? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, it made me rediscover the joy of playing to any people at all because, right. you know, I mean, nobody did any shows for a whole year, yeah. you know, and uh, it's funny, when you're um, a performer, sometimes you get tired and you think, oh, I just want to go home and watch the wheels, you know, but then you're home for two weeks and you go, where's the show? You know, I, right. so, because it's in your blood. So yeah, getting back out and doing shows, it is in my blood and doing something like um, Floyd Fest is, yeah. is really a thrill. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk about that a little bit because we are at Floyd Fest. Um, you know, what does it mean? You know, the, the history that you have with Virginia and with festivals, like you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, um, I've done Lachen Fest and I did uh, the Swanee um, Fest down in Florida. Right. But this is the first one I've done in Virginia. Well, I guess Lachen was in Virginia, but but this is a first for me, and it's 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 just really fun and exciting. People are relaxed and happy, and absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Exciting. Well, let me leave you with this, Anne, because you have a busy day. Let me leave you with this. In 70 years, when we're all gone, what do you want people to think about when they think of Van Wilson? What do you want the first thing that people think about when they think of the legacy that you've left behind? Oh, I hope they think of me as a as a person who happens to be female, who didn't take no for an answer in what was what used to be a man's world. In the music world of um, rock, used to be a man's world, and I hope that they will think of me as somebody who just came in and did it anyway. Didn't take no. Thank you so much, Anne. You're welcome. We watch kids grow up here. We watch the same patrons come back. There's some heart in this festival that's not unlike any other thing you go. And this is, okay, this is the patrons festival. That's the one thing. A lot of other festivals, it really is centered right on the artists, maybe some of the staff, and these people are kind of rock stars and such. This is the Patriots Festival, it belongs to them. Yeah. And there's something organic that we can never get away. It's a culture and brand. Sure. And we can never lose that. And when other people come up here, you can't describe it. Yeah. It's something that's just indelible, and you never find it anywhere else.